stay back. I may be wounded, but I'm still armed. How'd you get past my traps anyway? Just remember, I still got bullets, in case you get any funny ideas. What are you doing out here anyway? That feels a mite better. Wish I had something to give you, but I gnawed through my last sprat worst an hour ago. Nice to know she cares. Catherine had us making drops for some big shot client out here. And before you ask, I don't know who they are. Or were. The whole point of making drops in the middle of nowhere was to keep their identity and whereabouts a secret. Yeah. I guess the Marauders noticed because they were waiting for us. Blew the bridge and took off with the goods. Last I saw, they were heading back up the hill. If you got the sand to go after him, I'm sure Catherine can reward you for your trouble. Me? I'm headed back to Fallbrook just as soon as I've caught my breath. Up, boss. Got him, boss. Ah, my eyes. That's the last of them. Please, you don't have to do this. Maybe they're still alive. One. 
So what'd you think of the game last night? I still can't believe Armstrong ran the field from the Tuesday zone. Um, yeah. Armstrong's really something. Nearly took a fellow's head clean off with a toss ball stick. Yeah, well, he's a hacker. That's what they do. Rangers don't show a shred of mercy in a Darlings game. Bates got tossed out of the game for excessive sportsmanlike conduct in the third half. <laughs> Serves him right. Yeah. Um, Felix, I'm gonna be honest. I don't know what a Tuesday zone is. I don't know my tenders from my forwards. Thing is, I just don't understand toss ball. Hey, that's fine. Nothing wrong with that. I'll teach you all there is to know. Uh, great. That's just swell. Can't wait. Fun.
Good thing I got my hiking boots on. They're actually the same as my ass kicking boots. I can't afford another pair. We ought to camp out here tonight, you know? Make a little fire, sing songs. All right, let's nice dance! One. wanted to poke through a high cane wireless. They only got one on Terra 2, you know. This station's under the protection of the corporate compliance crew. You a marauder? Cause me and my sunshine, that's my gun if you were wondering, we don't take kindly to marauders. A coherent enough response, I reckon. Must be true. You're clear, but I would caution you against pressing on ahead. I take it you ain't met the other C3s. Me and Sunshine are doing exactly what we've been tasked with. You want more details? You ought to talk to my crew. See that path that runs underneath that giant archway? Follow it on down. There is nothing I'd enjoy more, but the C3s play it by the book, usually.
That's the last of them! Quick!
security patrol. Best with the best. Some cr You're adjusting before you pull. You're anticipating.
Hi. Hello, stranger. Can I interest you in a raptodon tongue? You look like a man who's looking for some mostly fresh animal parts. Sebastian, you ever get your hands on those pheromone sacks? Manipillars ain't gonna hunt themselves, you know. I must have hunted a dozen, but I couldn't find a single sack on any of them. <laughs> Manipillars ain't got pheromone sacks. I just told him that so he'd stop asking me for advice. At least I'm getting a good haul of claws in the process. You're in good hands, traveling with Monarch's top merc. Huh. I haven't seen her in a few days, but I've been meaning to ask her how that rapted on acid is working out. I hope it's working okay, because no one else really seems interested in this stuff. Wait, I see what's going on. Don't get me wrong, I'd like to give her a discount. She's a real fine lady, always talks nice and slow, so I understand. But if I give her one, I won't hardly make a bit. You sound pretty sure. And she is awful nice. Okay, I'll do it. Have you talked to Sebastian yet? Okay, but how did he say it? Did he sound it? Was he like, yay, a day with Celia? I've secretly been waiting for this, or was it more, sure, I don't have anything else going on. Not to worry, if I never buy another Raptodon tongue, it'll be too soon. Ah, look at me going on. I'm sure you've got other things to do in Mr. Anyhow. Be careful with your new friends in Amber Heights. They're not the most reliable types. Anyway? Excellent timing on your part. I worked my fingers to nubs, but I finally completed the Bolt 52 form. You're getting ahead of yourself again. So I am. Do you have this cartridge? I'm working on a plan to reorganize the board. Slowly, peacefully, and with meticulous documentation. You... you are? You... that... You could do a lot of good around here, you know. Don't go getting my hopes up. But that's entirely the point. We've got to hope. We have got to partake once more of the full resources and opportunities of Halcyon. What about the folks out in the wilderness? Amber Heights, Fallbrook. Will you share with them, or will you hoard those resources here? My sincerest hope is for MSI to become a model for all of Halcyon. But we must start somewhere. But truly, I am getting ahead of myself. I knew there was something going on. This is exactly the proof we need. I'll transmit this data along with the completed Bolt 52 right away. After that, we'll sit back and quietly wait for the board to respond. That means no more broadcasts from us. Then it's good that I keep such meticulous notes. I've asked myself the same thing many times, especially seeing as the legal mechanisms we employed were part of the board's own bylaws. Not intentionally, though that's technically true. For many years, this planet was home to as many corporations as Terra 2. But back then, it was known as Terra 1. Really? I always thought they were refreshingly straightforward names. Here, though, the results were... mixed. That ain't fair. They didn't leave on account of the hazards. They left on account of their cowardice. Sharp as ever, Nyoka. And as the other corporations began to tally their losses, they decided to pull out. Our leadership at the time certainly wanted to. But there were others of us who saw an opportunity. The chance to improve working hours and conditions, to reform MSI from the ground up. It's humane, but it's also good business sense. Exhausted, sick, and malnourished workers are not productive workers. Even a cursory review of the data bears that out. Anyway, we learned of a loophole in the corporate bylaws that would allow MSI to claim ownership of the entire planet once the other corporations pulled out. 
creating the perfect environment for us to enact these new reforms. Hmm? Oh, well, there were surely other junior executives with more open minds. But I was keeping my tone flat and maintaining eye contact. You weren't supposed to notice I was avoiding the subject. This is why you've never been good with presentations, sir. <sighs> Very well. Many, many years ago, Graham Bryant and I used to be collaborators of sorts. Indeed, for all the good it did. MSI's then leadership wasn't enthusiastic. They insisted we'd be relocating to Terra 2 along with everyone else. Many of us chose to stay behind, and as the most senior executive remaining, I ended up in charge of what was left of MSI. I moved forward with our planned reforms, as well as our strategy to assume ownership of the planet. Yet not long after I renamed it Monarch, the other corporations dislodged us from the board and began an official campaign to paint us as lawless savages. I don't know. Everything we did was legal and above board. We followed their rules, and yet they still found reasons to declare us outlaws. Your first mistake was expecting the board to cut you a fair deal. I understand the sentiment, but if we can't rely on some sort of framework, then what do we have? I do think there's something useful in a governing body like the board. Something that keeps us from anarchy, but I dearly wish it functioned differently. As far as I'm concerned, the less said about Graham, the better. Graham seemed like a reasonable man years ago. We both agreed that MSI's treatment of its workers was untenable. I thought reforms would be enough. I didn't realize you wanted to abolish the corporate system entirely. Why wouldn't anyone? Yeah, and once you go back to him, he'll own your dignity too. Yeah, that'd go a long way toward rebuilding our homes. To be on the board is to be part of the colonial community, and being cut off means slow strangulation. Indeed, we've got to consider realities, not ideals. If membership on the board can ease our hardships and provide us with opportunities, then that's the path I mean to pursue. Besides, I'm hopeful that additional leverage on our part will allow us a more equitable relationship. Indeed. I've discovered it's much easier to negotiate from a position of power. My hope is to maintain the reforms we've managed here, and who knows? Perhaps once we're restored, we could spread them to other corporations. It's straight bullshit is what it is. A fabrication rich folks use to preserve their investments by leaving a lot of people here to die slow. Nyoka has the right of it. It's a legal provision that gives the board the authority to cordon off any planet or location that it deems dangerous. Sounds like the board gave themselves the power to arrest an entire planet. They would say it's for the greater good. Yes, making all of MSI criminals in the board's eyes. Rather hard to run a business that way. What can I do for you? You know, Nioka, between you and me, we know all there is to know about Monarch. What makes you say that? Well, you got your life experience as a hunter, and I've memorized every episode of Terror on Monarch. Oh, Terror on Monarch's a riot. It's all made up, though. You know that, right? Yeah, right. Next, you're gonna tell me Halcyon and Helen weren't based on a real person. I won't tell you that, no. You seem happier in your ignorance. Infamous Amber Heights. Welcome back. You find anything out there? 
Let's see. These are old. This... This one's got the Amber Heights gate code on it. Just like the one I found earlier. And here's... A letter. Wait, this is from Graham. Oh, of all the... Captain. He gave them the gate codes. Yeah. He did. He really did. I know he's got his head in the clouds, but... I always believed there was a core of good there. What the hell happened to live and let live? I always figured Mr. Bryant for a man of character. In the end, though? He was just another name on a long list of frauds. Yeah. He had us all fooled. Now I've got to sort out how to break it to the rest of my people. Thank you for bringing this back, but I need some time. I gotta think. I'll let you know if I figure something out. Hey, boss. I've been thinking. I can't believe I wanted to shake his hand. I need a shower. It makes you wonder if being a treacherous, two-timing coward is some sort of contagious disease, or if he was just born that way. At first, I liked what Graham was doing. The Iconoclasts were gonna change Halcyon for the better. But then, we found out Graham was behind the slaughter of Amber Heights. How can anybody so morally bankrupt lead a movement to transform the colony? Yeah, maybe you're right. You'd never do something like that, would you? Slaughter a whole community of innocents? I'm sure Graham told himself the same thing. He wasn't the one who held the gun and pulled the trigger. All he did was turn a key. The thing is, that's all it takes. Sometimes the difference between right and wrong is turning a key, or looking the other way, or keeping your mouth shut when you ought to speak up. Let's get back to it. I need to put all this ugly business with Graham behind me. What's up? Nioka! When I founded the Iconoclasts, I did so amidst the ghosts of this planet's past. Since then, many have asked me, why here? Were you involved in the massacre? Was that some gruesome plot to clear a path for my dreams? My response to you is the same as to all others. The death of MSI was an incidental tragedy. I'd have walked this path with or without it. I did no such thing. Their deaths came in the night while I slept in Stellar Bay. And regardless, we're discussing a past long since left behind. Those ghosts still haunt me. But they needn't curse my people. Until then, it does us no good to dwell on past mistakes. If I were the type of man to make that decision, and I assure you, I am not. I'd have to be so obsessed with dismantling their regime that I'd turn to desperate measures. I have since learned that their mistakes will end them in time and that we will persevere where they do not. But back then, suffocating under that oppressive culture, I can understand a lesser man than myself making a terrible, ghastly mistake. If MSI had abandoned this place and taken to Terra too, any hope for our salvation would have been lost. Here, without the shackles of the Halcyon board, we are free to grow as the universe intended. Had we fled with MSI, our spirits would have withered. You've seen that withering yourself. The colony is dying. The massacre of Amber Heights, unfortunate as it was, presented the slim possibility of saving the souls of Terra too. Here we are, poised to do just that. If that's the case, they are free to say so. And I will take their opinions into consideration after we've accomplished our goals. For now, our sights must remain on spreading our message 